Appreciate being up here. I uh, didn't know I was going to be up here, to be honest with you. But uh, it's not the first time I've been behind a mic. But uh, anyway, I'll see what I can do. But first of all, before we get to the introduction, I just want to say that uh, this is a great group of people here. They love the sport of wrestling. Uh, they have a passion for it. This area always has. This was one of the reasons I wrestled, just because of this area. And I just want you to know that uh, earlier they were showing the, the highlights of uh, yesterday's Real Pro Wrestling in there. And I want you to make sure that everybody understands what Real Pro Wrestling is. And if you don't, you know, you spread the word and you watch it. It's, it's an organization that's legitimate. And they're, they're, uh, they, every week they've been wrestling on packs for three weeks so far, and they got five more weeks on Sunday at 3 o'clock, and it's on sport, uh, Fox Sports Net on Wednesdays at 3 o'clock. And they got, they actually have uh, six more programs on Fox Sports Net of RPW. It's a replay. So make sure you tune into it and talk to people about it. It's our first time that we've had a legitimate group that's actually spending a whole lot of money on TV production, getting into potential 90 minute million homes. And you need to tune in and you need to uh, support it as much as you can because it's a legitimate group that I don't have time to talk about it a lot right now that have put their heart and soul in it and spent a lot of money. A particular family has, has spent seven to eight million dollars right now on, this, uh, on these events. And the only other organizations that we've ever had with, involved with Real Pro Wrestling before, by that I'm saying legitimate wrestling, have never spent more than thirty thousand dollars, so it's uh, it's 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 pretty good stuff, and they need your support. The other thing I want to talk about before I get Royce here is that uh, Dave Hardy, where's Dave at? Dave, uh, and he's stepping down and retiring, and, and I believe you're the head man stepping down. This is last year, and that's Bernie Sagal from the Iowa High School Athletic Association. And some of you people probably have been to the state tournament before, is that correct? <laughs> state wrestling tournament? Well, you know, I'm sure you have. See, that's what I mean. It's a, it's a, it's a joke because, of course, you have been. And we're moving to a new facility, and they're, we're getting new people in charge of wrestling. And I'll tell you what, we got a great thing going right now. And because we're making some moves, we got some new people coming in, we want to make sure that that high school athletic association knows that we're interested in wrestling and hiring good people that will support the wrestling for the future of the state. Uh, we don't need to go backwards in any way. Real Pro Wrestling is making us go forward. Our high school athletic association needs to continue to have people like Hardy in there. There's not a lot. If I deal with the NCAA, and I'll tell you, I've never had anybody on the NCAA that's ever been on the committee that actually had wrestling background. And that, that hurts us there. And so we need to make sure that whoever they hire, and when they make this move next year, that they actually do a great job with the new facility because we need those students to, to, to go and show and support. But anyway, so much for that. Let's get on with uh, my introduction of Royce Alger. He will be the uh, first inductee. And Royce really was coached in Lisbon, Iowa by... I coach Brad Smith, and Coach Brad Smith is a multi-champion coach right now at City High, but was at Lisbon for many years. Brad actually wrestled for the Hawkeyes, was a national champion. I was an assistant coach back in 1976 when he won there, and so it wasn't too hard for the Hawkeyes to get him and get a hold of Royce, only about 30 miles away, but <clears throat> with his coach and having those ties. But anyway. Uh, to be honest with you, there's only a, maybe, I've had an unbelievable amount of wrestlers. But here's one of maybe six or eight <clears throat> of all the 142 All-Americans, 145 you know, national champions that actually stood out above the rest in, in their style. A lot of people could win matches on the mat because they out-wrestle people. This guy, Royce Elger, can walk into the weigh-ins and leave the weigh-ins and pretty much won the match. Not because he, not because, I mean, yeah, he was a strong-looking dude, but he came in there with, with the air of confidence, 
And of course, the guy that he would have to wrestle, he'd probably bump him a couple of times before he actually wrestled him, just actually before they weighed in. The guy always made weight because the guy, he scared the weight off the guy. <laughs> but Royce actually, um, he put the fear of the devil in his opponents. I just want you to know that. And that's because wrestling is difficult, but he made it more difficult by working hard the whole time with special types of snaps and movements and hard type of pace that, uh, that put him in a category by itself. One time for the team, we were getting ready to wrestle in an Iowa State meet. It was at Iowa State. It was going to be a battle like it always was. And he had his knee scoped. He had his knee actually operated on. Seven days later, he wrestled in, in the meet. And he had to wrestle one of the uh, all-time greats there. Uh, Kevin Jackson, I believe it was. And he had to win that match for us to win the meet. And he had to run him out of gas. And he, and he did that one. Coming off a, a seven-day surgery from for that so you know he's he's one of those select few but anyway Royce comes from good stock uh, right here and you can even introduce your mother but uh, Lisbon Iowa has a, a, a unbelievable reputation and I just want to uh, get Royce up here because like I said if he falls into that category of one of the select few you know I've had many greats that he is something special Royce Alger. It says here the Iowa Wrestling Hall of Fame Foundation Award to Royce Alger for his contributions to amateur wrestling.
right down the hall from me was Barry Davis. He was a fifth year se senior and he was still living in the dorms. <laughs> and he took us, you know, we, most kids you walk down to their rooms and you see like maybe a little microwave or, you know, uh, just maybe a, a color TV. And Barry Davis had just took a silver in the Olympics in 84 and he had a silver medal up on the wall. So I go down there. It was easy to get motivated when you could go down there and see Olympic, you know, medal. So I, I saw a very pitcher. I know he was inducted, but he was, I've had a lot of great, one of the reasons I really appreciate this is because these are all uh, Iowa uh, athletes. And, you know, I, I know a lot of people that, you know, Gable used to talk about some of his guys like, uh, you know, of course the Petersons and, you know, I was a young kid when Yagler was making his bones, but uh, uh, Peckham, he had, he had all kinds of stories about Peckham and all these other guys. So I had to listen to a lot of sauna stuff, but I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure that he probably wish he wouldn't have talked as much because I tried to emulate some of them guys and got in trouble. But uh, my roommate was Brad Penrith, and I only saw him on weekdays because the weekends he was in jail. So, he was from Bingham, Binghamton, New York, and, and I always said about Bingham, I said, well, you know what they say about Binghamton, New York, he still never, he never gets this joke, but I said it to him the very first day I met him, and he, and he said, what's that? And I said, well, Binghamton, New York, the, the population will always stay the same, girl gets pregnant, guy leaves town. <laughs> and he, uh, I also used to hit him with the joke that, you know, I heard that they uh, canceled driver's ed in New York. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, well, it, every time the cars stop, the girls got in the back seat. <laughs> so I had a lot of fun with Brad Penn. He said, he's straightened up now. He's a good kid. But uh, I always tell everybody I got a full ride to college. My dad dropped me off at Hillcrest and said, I'll see you at Thanksgiving. So, but no, seriously, that, that's part of the reason why I, I really believe that I could compete hard for Dan and, and probably what made me a, a good coach is that uh, I believe in levity in this sport and if you can't laugh and have a good time uh, and, and you can't love what you're doing, um, then, then it's not worth doing it. So I had a great experience at, at, at Iowa and uh, to be honest with you, there were some goals that I wish I, I, I would have fulfilled. but. You know, after the dust and the blood is dried and the dust is settled, uh, it, was a, it was a great experience and uh, just to be a part of uh, this great state of wrestling. I always considered, even even when I was a young kid, I saw the Gibbons boys, you know, and they were they went to Iowa State, and I was like, you know, I, I still had to root for them because they were, they were Iowa boys. So I always still, you know, really... Uh, favor the Iowa guys and pull for them. I don't care where they're at. So, because we're all in a fine, unbelievable, the, the most well-attended state tournament in the country. I go, I did a lot of recruiting and, and these state tournaments are nothing like ours. So we really do have a lot of things to be proud of. But I also want to thank uh, Dan for those kind words and uh, it's been one hell of a ride. Thanks.